Hello, parishes. How are you doing today? Honestly, how are you doing today? Today is Friday, March 20th. Well, it's about, at the time of this recording, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And for today's uh, video, I might even do two today. Um, I might do Compline later on tonight. But the message for this afternoon, um, I want to update everybody on the parish a little bit, um, on both uh, Grace's uh, site and um, for Emmanuel. Um, everything has really ground down to a halt. Um, I am in my office today. Uh, but I have been the only one other than the cleaning person in the church today. And um, I'm just gathering whatever I can so that over the next two weeks I can uh, be in here as little as I possibly can. Um, I did get a an email from Father Sam uh, down at St. James in Pentwater uh, where they had announced to their congregation the same thing that we've announced to ours, um, that for the next two weeks specifically, we'll be closing down everything. Um, but then after that, at least until May 10th, uh, May 10th, May 15th, uh, depending on, on which which letter you read, um, we'll go back into, the, the plan is now to come back together and worship again uh, mid-May, okay? But for today's video, I decided to uh, use an office out of the Lutheran Book of Worship, since yesterday we did Compline out of the Episcopal Book. Um, today we're going to do uh, an office called Responsive Prayer, um, and we're kind of doing a, a, an afternoon service, okay? Both the Episcopal and the Lutheran Church follow a, a monastic order of prayer, okay? Mm -hmm. Because in our histories, in our traditions, uh, monasticism plays a, a, a big part. I mean, Martin Luther himself was a priest monk um, and a, a theologian and a teacher. Uh, so the offices, the daily offices, um, in a monastic understanding, the daily offices keep you grounded. They they interrupt your day with specific hour at specific hours for the purpose of prayer for study for reading for connecting with God so today um, we're going to do noon prayer well actually noon prayer is at noon this is would be um, an an afternoon prayer service okay for the reading and the devotion uh, I'm reading from this source. Episcopalians, you have one of these. It's called uh, the Day by Day. And for Lutherans, it's called Christ in Our Home. Okay. And if you haven't picked up one of these, uh, people at Emmanuel, you'll find them right outside of the sanctuary door. Um, it's just a daily, you know, quick little uh, read a portion of the Bible and then just a little explanation as to what you just read or maybe a life application lesson of how you can apply it. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. The scripture is taking, taken from 1 Samuel uh, 15, 22 to 31. Oh, sorry, before I get to that, um, I do want to say something about our finances for both parishes. As you know, on the rare occasion that we have had to cancel Sunday morning worship due to inclement weather, um, we've had a snow day or a snowstorm came through. On those particular Sundays that we don't have public worship or, or everybody's not gathered, we do financially um, suffer the consequences of that decision. And rarely do we ever make up what we lost in the plate for that Sunday. Well, this extended period of time, as you can well imagine, um, it's going to offer its own set of challenges. As you are well aware, the, even if we're not gathered, the church still has um, 
business that it's taking care of, even if we're not physically still in the building, we're still working. Um, so we've got payroll to meet. We still have to heat the building. We got to keep the lights on. In short, y'all, we still have bills. And although the financial loss that we were going to suffer did not play into the decision um, to close our operations, at least temporarily, they are a factor of the matter that we're going to have to deal with. If you are able and so choose, you can always fill out your giving envelopes and put them in the mail and put a stamp on that thing. Um, we'll receive them here in the office. Even though nobody's in the office, we still get mail delivered and we still have somebody coming in and sorting through that. Um, also, we're working on a way through a company called Tithely to make available to parishioners of both parishes uh, a way to give online, okay? More information will be coming out on that as well. Uh, I just want to put in a, a gentle reminder in your ear, okay? With that being said, 1 Samuel 15, verses 24 to 31. Saul pleads for forgiveness. Then Saul finally admitted, yes, I have sinned. And I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. Oh, please forgive my sin now and go with me to worship the Lord. But Samuel replied, I will not return with you. Since you have rejected the Lord's command, he has rejected you from being king of Israel. As Samuel turned to go, Saul grabbed at him and tried to hold him back and tore his robe. And Samuel said to him, See, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to someone else, one who is better than you. And he who is the glory of Israel will not lie, nor will he change his mind, for he is not human that he should change his mind. Then Saul pleaded again, I know I have sinned, but please at least honor me before the leaders and before my people by going with me to worship the Lord your God. So Samuel finally agreed and went with him. And Saul worshiped the Lord. Here endeth the reading. This devotion is called to be continued. First Samuel 15 shares a difficult episode in the life of Saul, king of Israel. Now, the background on that. Israel had gone a long time under the period called the Judges. Okay? And they weren't ruled by a king, but they looked at all the other kingdoms around them and, and they saw those territories being ruled by kings. And, and so they pleaded with the Judges and they pleaded with God and said, Give us a king too, so that we can be um, so we can be legitimate like all the other countries around us that have a king. Well, God told him that Israel, you don't want to do this. I am your king. And and they pleaded still. So through the prophets, um, a king was selected for Israel. Samuel was the prophet who was assigned the task of finding the first king for Israel. And Samuel finds Saul. So we pick up that story now a little bit later on. Saul has, well, he, he's turned his back on God and done what he wasn't supposed to do. And While the kingdom was taken away from Saul, was going to be taken away from Saul. The next king of Israel this guy you may have heard of before, his name is David. Yeah, you know, the kid with the rocks and the, the giant, that David. He becomes the next king of Israel. But this encounter right here in scripture that we read today is Saul and Samuel talking together. And Well, God gives Saul a command, but Saul doesn't completely follow through on it. Maybe he isn't totally committed to God. Maybe he thinks his way is better than God's way. In any case, he disobeys God. Then the prophet Samuel brings a message from God to Saul. 
Because of Saul's disobedience, someone else will replace him as king of Israel. As for Samuel, he wants to part ways with Saul too. Saul's response to these words might surprise us. He doesn't complain, argue, or promise to do better if he's given another chance. Instead, he confesses his sin, asks for forgiveness, and begs Samuel to continue on with him. This episode ends with Samuel relenting and going with Saul, and Saul worships God. The story of God's love and promises of God's people will continue, however. In the next chapter, Samuel will anoint David as Israel's new king. Holy God, strengthen my commitment to you. Amen. The prayer today is for those longing for reconciliation. The noonday prayer, or prayer in the afternoon, responsive prayer, is found on page 328 of the Book of Worship. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for daily work. God, our creator, you have given us work to do and call us to use our talents for the good of all. Guide us as we work and teach us to live in the spirit who made us your sons and daughters and the love that made us sisters and brothers. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a great rest of your day. Um, I plan on taking that home with me, and my wife and I may enjoy a little glass of that a little bit later on. Now let's leave that as a tease. It was something homemade. And, uh, well, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about that later on tonight. Have a great afternoon. Talk to you later.